Fellow St. Lucians, our committed and devoted workers, particularly those of you in the front line of the fight against COVID-19, it is with a heavy heart that I address you today amidst the uncertainty of this global pandemic COVID-19. I am aware that all of you are concerned and are filled with fear, uncertainty, and anxiety about your health and safety, and also about your jobs, given the shutdown, partial or otherwise, and the resultant slowdown in economic activity. We recognize that the uncertainty of the times is growing day by day, and so the Department of Labor has been working assiduously to ensure that your rights and interests are preserved, your concerns are addressed, and to understand that out of this adversity, we will all learn the lessons taught and grasp the opportunities presented. I am aware that a number of you have either lost your jobs, been laid off, placed on rotation, or asked to take vacation. Having seen the effect of COVID-19 around the world, a cloud of uncertainty looms large over your livelihoods. As part of the government's stabilization program, the Prime Minister recently announced that workers who were in gainful employment and have paid at least one month in NIC contributions up to February 2020 will receive 50% of their salaries up to June 2020 with a minimum payment of $500 and a maximum payment of $1,500. Let me take this opportunity to assure you that the Department of Labor is working with all stakeholders during these trying times to ensure that the concerns of all are being addressed. The times we live in now are as novel as the novel COVID-19 virus. This calls for a certain measure of understanding, cooperation, and compromise by all. It is with this in mind that throughout our discussions with employer organizations, worker organizations, and our valued workforce, we have consistently encouraged consultation between the parties. Consult, consult, consult. The onslaught of COVID-19 and the impact on work is new to all of us. It is an occurrence for which there is no specific provision in our labor laws. And this is why we have adopted a tripartite approach of consultation with all stakeholders to clarify positions, encourage dialogue, and where there is need for clarity, guidance is sought from the Attorney General's chambers. This is necessary to ensure the effective application of the existing legislation and, when necessary, to draft appropriate amendments and or regulations that are likely to bring clarity, purpose and relevance applicable to this novel pandemic period and to give space and time for recovery. The Department of Labor has issued a few public service announcements which sought to address the burning issues of vacation, layoffs, leave, and other unsuspecting issues. Contact details for the Department of Labor are being provided in all public service announcements to facilitate and provide responses to workers, employers, and the general public during this period of social distancing and working from home. We encourage you to use the contact details provided to get the information or the clarity you seek. We also ask that you exercise patience whilst the department does its best to respond in a timely manner under the current circumstances. Now, as I turn to address the burning issues, let me also take this opportunity to confirm that there has been no change to the laws of St. Lucia as relates to the Labor Code. There is, however, a proposal presently before the Attorney General's Chambers regarding layoffs and suspensions under Section 148 of the Labor Code, which seeks to propose an extension to the period of layoff 
for a continuous period specific to COVID-19, together with the resolution of some other critical housekeeping matters which have arisen surrounding pay and the new standard of work from home. Notwithstanding, let me reiterate that there is no change to date in the applicable law, the Labor Code number 37 of 2006. Periods of lay layoffs as provided by Section 1481 of the law can extend to 12 weeks. Thereafter, it is deemed a termination due to redundancy. It is being proposed that the continuous period of layoffs be extended by an additional 12 weeks during times such as COVID-19 or national emergencies to give more time for review or assessment by the employer and also to provide allowance for recovery. Given the seriousness of this global pandemic and the uncertainty of the times, we believe that a layoff period of six months is appropriate for whilst the employee may not be paid during that period of layoff, he or she will still have some measure of job security. And at the same time, allowing for the employer to examine his or her books, review and consider redeployment of workforce and reposition business to work towards recovery. Whilst there is no obligation to pay salaries during the period of layoff, the employer is strongly encouraged to exercise goodwill and discretion where resources permit, especially to support breadwinners and loyal and long-serving employees. In view of the fact that the laws of St. Lucia have not changed, I wish to state that it is not the role or jurisdiction of the Labor Commissioner to sanction rotation, reduced hours, work from home conditions, salary cuts, and other adjustments to workers' contractual terms. This continues to be a function of negotiation and dialogue between employers and workers or their representatives. Again, recognizing the unique situation in which COVID-19 places us, we advise that employers, employees, and employee representatives consult, dialogue, and where agreement is reached, all agreed specifics should be reduced to writing for the protection of all parties. We recognize that there isn't much room to maneuver and that persons need to be creative in terms of adapting at this time. We are aware also that employers are opting to send employees on vacation leave, and we understand the dilemma. However, while we recognize the right of the employer to do so under Section 99 of the Labor Code, we must ask that they give employees the stipulated seven days notice as required by the same Section 99. We strongly encourage a spirit of consultation and collaboration between employers and employees, as we recognize that this is a time of immense stress and anxiety for all, and that these livelihood decisions should not be heavy-handed, but should be reached with dialogue and exploration of all available options and the implications for all parties. Ideally and traditionally, Vacation time is used for rest, relaxation, enjoyment, and recuperation, but it is not possible to enjoy a vacation in this current climate and condition. These issues have been addressed in PSAs which the department sent out after discussion and collaboration with stakeholders. Earlier, I indicated that out of adversity comes opportunity. I therefore urge employers and employees to look closely at the opportunities which this pandemic has laid out before us. Opportunities to allow for flexibility in operations and flexi time, work from home, the changing world and face of work, 
new areas for review of collective agreements to be expanded beyond wages and hours of work, to actual conditions to facilitate a more productive workforce. This is an opportunity to change, improve upon, and put a more contemporary face to our collective bargaining processes. Let us seize this time to build our resilience and modernize our processes. Having said this, employers are again reminded that they are still under an obligation to follow the law as it relates to redundancies, as I expect that there will be no breaches of the law. Employers are also reminded of Section 217 of the Labor Code, which stipulates the responsibility of employers to provide employees with personal protective equipment. We trust that all will be guided by this provision by fulfilling the obligations regarding the health and safety of our employees in the workplace. In closing, I wish to reiterate that we are facing a challenge of immense uncertainty which requires our collective attention and efforts to combat this unseen enemy. I appeal to employers to dig deep and allow your humanity, compassion, and consideration for your employees to emerge. Recognizing the value of your employees in the growth and development of your enterprises, you should seriously consider sharing accumulated resources and profits with employees in their time of extreme need. This is truly the time to be our brothers and sisters keeper. Employees, I also appeal to you and your representatives for understanding and consideration of the efforts by employers to keep businesses afloat and staff engaged in this difficult time. The United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, has described this as a time for science and solidarity. He has suggested the view that there is also an epidemic of misinformation. Understandably, people are scared and are uncertain. I urge you to help us win this battle by adopting the vaccine of trust in institutions and lean on the Labor Department, which will endeavor to be responsible and responsive to your needs. To all of you in the working environment, I wish you well. Let us build solidarity through safe health practices, exercising social distancing protocols, and looking out for our fellow men and women. After all, we are all in this together. I thank you.